Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and this is part seven of Feynman's Lost Lecture. Uh, where we last left off, I was showing how Feynman's model, where the sun uh, pulses so that uh, at equal angles instead of equal times, creates a picture that looks like this and a, um, a velocity diagram that looks like this. So I'm going to run it through one more time to remind you of what's going on with this. It's going slower out here. Amount of time is proportional to the area of this triangle. Bigger triangle, more time. And it starts to speed up and makes it to the last iteration. Okay. The big observation was that this um, velocity diagram, all these changes in velocities uh, are constant. So what we have here, and all these angles over here, these exterior angles are congruent because they're all congruent to this angle in the middle here. So what we have here is a regular polygon. And a regular polygon, if, if you have a regular polygon, it has a center. This point is not at the center. Feynman calls that an eccentric point. Here's the actual center. And actually you can see in green the little circle there. Um, the more uh, or the smaller the angle is, say it's just a 10 degree angle. Um, if I had a 10 degree angle, it would look even, this thing would look even more like an ellipse, and this velocity diagram would look even more like a circle. I'll turn it back into uh, 30 degrees. Now, one more thing I want to show you is as this planet orbits, there is um, an angle I want you to be aware of. This 30 degree angle here if, if, is going to be equal to, if I make uh, two more line segments from the actual center of this circle, which is also the center of the regular polygon, this angle here is going to be 30 degrees, just like, just like this one is. And I'm going to run this through just to see. Now I have um, three 30 degree angle segment, three 30 degree angles from here to here and this angle from the center to this point to this point is also 90 degrees and in general at any time the angle uh, that the planets traveled will be equal to the angle formed by uh, the angle from the center of that circle so right now I have one two three I have uh, four of these, and this is a 120 degree angle. Here's 150, 180, 210. So this is just something I want you to be aware. This is going to be easier to see in the next step when I go to a uh, to an actual circle, or when I create, when I make the angles infinitely small. But for now, just want you to see that there is an angle, or, or there is a an angle that corresponds, this angle here, this 30 degree angle, corresponds to this 30 degree angle. That, that, this will become more clear as I um, add more and more sides. So in the extreme case, if we make the angle really small, we'll have an actual circle as our uh, velocity diagram. I want to show you what that looks like. Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and this is part seven of Feynman's Lost Lecture. Uh, last part we ended with Feynman showing that if we have the sun uh, pulse at equal angles the velocity diagram becomes a regular polygon. Well if we make that angle really small we get this situation. What I have here on the left is planet uh, going around creating uh, basically a curved figure that looks to be like an ellipse. Um, on the right what I've got is the velocity diagram. And I want to pause this velocity diagram for a second just to kind of remind us about what this all means. At this moment, the planet is going in this direction. And it's going, it's starting to sort of slow down. Let me, let me move it back a little bit. At the very beginning, the planet is going in this direction right now, this direction here. You can see it's kind of moving in that direction and it's going very fast and that's the length of this is, is the speed in fact I'm going to put onto the planet a line segment which is the same length as this line segment 
and actually is going in the same direction. So what this means right here is that the planet's going in this direction, and it's going kind of fast because the size of this line segment is how fast it's going. And as time goes on, you can see what um, what happens is that the planet's getting a little bit slower. That's indicated by this, this line segment getting smaller, or this line segment getting smaller. And it's going in a different direction. And then as it continues going around, it's getting slower. And now it's at this moment, it's going horizontally for, for a moment. And then it gets over here. This is when it's at its very slowest. And as you can see, that's also when this line segment, that is this line segment here, is as small as possible. And it's also the moment where the planet is going directly uh, sort of vertically down. And as I continue, the planet is getting a little faster, a little faster, a little faster, until it gets back to its starting position, in which case it is going as fast as it can and going like straight up. And I'm going to animate this for a second so you can kind of get, get a feel for that. You can watch this line segment. It's kind of like a, like a second hand on a clock going counterclockwise. The shorter it is, the slower it's going. The longer it is, the faster it's going. And at any moment, the direction of it is the direction that the planet's going. Um, I'll take this thing off there. Now, uh, what Feynman says also is that at any time, we can measure this angle from the from the center of this velocity circle will always this this angle here is always equivalent to this angle over here I'm going to animate that so you can kind of watch that happen and Feynman's going to use these ideas now <clears throat> so what Feynman says is that at any, uh, at any moment of time, here we have the velocity diagram over here, and we can watch how that, how that sort of changes throughout time. Well, the velocity diagram gives us an indication about where the planet would have to be. For one thing, we know that this angle has to equal this angle. So the planet has to be at this moment somewhere on this line segment. But where exactly? Well, here's where Feynman got a good idea. He said, what if I take my velocity diagram and I rotate it? Now remember, originally the direction of the planet was, it was going in this direction. But now I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And what this is going to do is it's going to make it so these two angles are kind of aligned. Now, the planet needs to be somewhere on this line segment, and its direction needs to be uh, needs to be this direction, this direction right here. But when I turn this thing 90 degrees, the direction of the planet goes is no longer this, but it's perpendicular to to this. So what he says that I can do is I can. I'm going to make this circle bigger, because it's all proportional, I can make this bigger. And then I'm going to slide this entire picture over so that the center of the circle of the velocity diagram is right on top of the sun. Now the question is, where does the planet go? We know it has to be somewhere on this line, and we know that it has to be on a line that's perpendicular to this, this is the velocity vector after it's been rotated, so it needs to be perpendicular to that. So the planet has to be on this line, and it has to be going in a direction that's perpendicular to this, so it has to be on a line perpendicular to that. So one way to do that is to make the perpendicular bisector of this line segment. And if I put the planet right here, to be concluded in the next part of this tutorial.